Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to a very, very cold evening in the garden. <laughs> I am super excited tonight. Uh, we're going to be doing a commission piece for a wonderful lady named Lori who watched a video of mine called Moonlight and kind of fell in love with those colors and that technique. That was a dirty cup straight pour in some of my favorite colors. So we're going to be doing that tonight. I will show you the colors in just a moment. This is a 24 by 24 inch gallery wrap canvas from Artist Loft. I have taped the back and put my push pins in and I have painted my sides and edges with my paints gray. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to take a moment and say thank you so much to one of our viewers, Stephanie Hancock. She sent me this beautiful, beautiful bracelet and I cannot wait to wear it. <laughs> the only reason it's still in here is because I don't want to get paint on it. So <laughs> thank you so much, Stephanie. You're so sweet to think of me. I really love it. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so colors. We are going to be using one of my favorites. This one is Golden's Permanent Violet Dark. Beautiful stuff. Everything is mixed with Liquitex Gloss Medium and Floetrol tonight. Pretty thick. Um, that painting that Lori watched was part of my Thick and Dirty series <laughs> where we were doing straight pours with dirty cups from up high and getting some beautiful results because there had been a lot of discussion that you really needed thin paint to do a straight pour and get a lot of cells and we tested that and found it not to be true. So it is in my experience definitely the technique of pouring from up high that creates those cells for us. So we're using kind of thick paint leaving a mound on a mound and then sinking into itself pretty quickly. Okay, so that's our permanent violet dark. Then we are using Golden's Payne's Gray, which has been the star of the show <laughs> in the last few videos. Really, really fun stuff. Pretzel pours and wandering wing pours and <laughs> pearl pours even. And uh, we did a wandering ring pour after that that I think you guys saw last weekend or Wednesday. So yeah. Okay, so that's our Payne's Gray. This one, well, let me do the last golden one first. And this is Golden Quinacridone Violet. And I have added just a smidge of this color, which is DecoArt Deep Sapphire, to that to deepen it a little bit and give it more of a violet tone rather than a red tone. Because by itself, it's pretty red. So this is very pretty. It's another very plummy color. <laughs> you remember our plummy one, HOA? How do you spell that? P-L-U-M-M-Y. Okay, just checking. Plummy. So then we have our DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold. She's back. She's back. Beautiful stuff. She's back by popular demand. Uh, this is the DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in deep sapphire. Amazing. Amazing, sparkly, shimmer, gorgeousness. Love this color. And last but not least, we have Amsterdam Titanium White mixed with a little bit of DecoArt Americana Decor Satin Enamels in pure white. Also not thin. Okay, so those are our colors. Our game plan is to use this big old jug here. Jump. This is, we need about 21 ounces of paint for that size canvas. This thing goes up to... 32 ounces of paint, so 21 is about there. So we're going to do our best to stay around 21 ounces of paint. We are going to be doing a dirty pour. So, to that end, what a dirty pour is, I will show you. <laughs> we're going to take our paint and pour it from up high into the center of the cup. Just like that. We are not layering it carefully down the side. The next one we're going to use is some of that permanent violet dark. Pouring it from up high and I want it to sink under the surface of that Payne's Gray. Let's see, let's put a little bit, let's put just a smidge of white in there, just a drop. And we're gonna put some of this beautiful deep sapphire right in there. And then some of our quinacridone violet. And then some gold. Which way I don't have my glasses on, so can you keep an eye on the eye. ounces for me, please? Thank it's you. It's a little over 14 now. Okay. We're going to go back to some more Payne's Gray. One per minute, Violet Dark. 18. 
<laughs> Another quick shot of white. Some more quinacridone violet. 20? You might go over just a smidge, that's okay. No way, really? <laughs> that never happens. So mean. How does that mean? I'm just doing it funny. Okay. And a little bit of gold. Okay. So this is our gorgeous cup. I think I want one more shot of white in there from really way up high. There we go. See that bubble that came out? <laughs> I missed it. Okay. So that's our cup. I do also have a cup of drips here that is mostly Payne's Gray. It does have some gold shimmer in it because it is drips from the last few pours. So, let me see. I think I'm just gonna pour a puddle of this in the center. And we'll stretch that out a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of gold in the middle of that too. So this is just a nice easy way to ensure that our paint can slide easily. So I am going to put a little bit of gold in the center of that and I'm going to put a little bit of the permanent violet dark because Lori likes purple and so do I. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, look how pretty that cup looks, hey Joy? We're going to pour this from up high into the center and probably do a couple twists and turns. So are you ready husband of awesomeness? Yes my love. Here we go. From up high. And we're gonna put some twists and turns in there. And that deep sapphire is beautiful. Those little shots of the white are making mm -hmm. it. Look at all those cells. I'm just gonna catch that drip. I'm just gonna swirl that about just a little bit. Now, we are going to give this a moment. HOA, can you see all those air bubbles on there? Uh -huh. So, what happens when you do a straight pour from up high? As you're pouring your paint, it is traveling down and it's churning in the air and it's aerating itself. It's adding air to the paint. So by the time it hits the canvas, those little bits of air come up as air bubbles, which when they pop, turn into cells for us, which is pretty awesome, I think. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. We're just gonna give that a second. I don't really need much of a base coat. I'm gonna put a little bit of one around here though to ensure that everything moves smoothly. We're also giving the cells time to percolate and come up to the surface. pretty there's a lot of like there's some gold in there and some white in the center and I see the panes and I see the, the deep sapphire okay let's tilt this out let's see let's kind of lock this down a little bit there and take care of it while it's here rather than have to come back to it. And we're going to let this float down, kind of walking it back and forth. I'm going to go off that side in that corner. Just float gently down to that other corner. Really nice 
nice circle there. That's cool. This is looking pretty good. I'm not crazy about that center part. And I'm kind of tempted to just put a little bit of white. Because we're going to do that. <laughs> gonna go right in the middle over here. Okay. So there we go. Maybe not from quite up as high, but I'll create some pretty fingerlings in there as well. a lot of dark I mean it's really beautiful to my eye but in my experience when they, dry, they look this dark while they're wet they're gonna get even darker when they're dry and as pretty as it is you actually want something that you're looking at on your painting so that's pretty cool let's start that Take some of that extra paint off of that corner. stretch it out. And go off that top corner, that top edge down there, and anchor that side of it as well. I like that swoop that we've got going on. Now that it's anchored over those two sides, we can really open that up. Such pretty colors. What do you think, HOA? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of really groovy, subtle stuff going on. I like that top ring pour part a lot. I think it's really, really beautiful. And I like all the background stuff of what's going on from the original straight pour with the more blended, softer look. I kind of feel like we need to open this up a little bit more though and stretch it out a bit more. Paint's not moving very fast anymore because there's not a ton left on there. I think that looks pretty cool. I really like the movement in here. I like the flow. I like the lines. There's a lot of patterns happening. I'm going to rip my hands off. And then we'll torch it one more time. I bet you we'll get more cells coming up. <laughs>
Ooh, nice. Is that paint on my chin? <laughs> yeah, under here. <laughs> Where'd you do that? To get it over here, I'm tilting. Okay. All right. This is looking pretty awesome. I have to say, I love all of this. This is really pretty. I'm kind of tempted to stretch this out some more. What do you think? Do you think we should? Because this is beautiful and this is beautiful. Well, if you do it at a relatively shallow angle and wait, then you can pull it off. If you tip it up just too straight too far, you might end up with those rivulet looking things. Yeah, the paint's too thick for rivulets. Oh, go nice and slow a little bit to appease HOA. It's still moving. Yeah, is it opening up there mm -hmm. at the bottom? Yeah. yeah. I always think the coolest stuff lies inside of all the cool in the pore, and when you open it up, that's when you you really get to see all of that. Uh -huh. Actually, I like it like that even better. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Lori, I hope you like this one. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Should we have done the ring pour part that was more distinct colors or should I left it alone as just the straight pour? Um, but I think this is all going to dry really, really beautifully. And uh, I'm excited to see it dry. Now I'm just adjusting these outer rings so they don't look so smashed. I'll bend up a little bit more, composition wise. That looks pretty cool. I like it. So, this was awesome. Um, I'm gonna be going to Dallas day after tomorrow, so I won't be here to show you it dry right away, but I will show you it dry in the next video. So, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. We'll see you real soon in here. I mm -hmm. love that dark panes background with all that stuff floating on top of it. It's so pretty and that quinacridone violet is just popping with the permanent violet dark. And I love the deep sapphire that's like deepened the permanent violet dark. It's like a really blue violet now. It's really pretty in here with the panes gray. This is cool. This is going to be really pretty when it dries matter of which way do we like it but we'll play with it more later on we are starting to get some cells popping up little gold cells from that puddle of gold that we poured into also the gold that was in the straight pour there's some bigger boulder cells there of course we tilted this a lot so <laughs> but like I said I would rather have more distinct vibrant color than just everything all blended up together but this was a lot of fun. I really do love the straight pours and dirty cups are just, it's so much fun to me because you don't know exactly what's going to happen until you pour it. So this was definitely cool though. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>